Have you ever heard about a culture whose traditions intertwine with the supernatural through a dance wearing the head of a deer? Whose warriors resisted the Spanish? We learn about the Yaqui, or Yome, whose traditions, folklore, battles with Spain and Mexico tell a story of persistence and connection. Enter into a world where every step in an ancient dance echoes the past, and every tale told carries the weight of a history. Join us as we delve into a tale that begins in Sonora, Mexico, and leads all the way to the desert of Arizona. Who were the Yome people? What beliefs did they hold? And how did they manage to sustain such a large population in spite of the harsh desert conditions? Stay tuned to find out. The Yaqui and Mayo tribes of Sonora, Mexico, refer to themselves as Yome, which is the Yaqui word for person. Their homelands include the Rio Yaqui Valley in Sonora, Mexico, and Southern Arizona in southwestern United States. Our first chapter leads us to the story of the deer dance, a cherished ritual held as a holy custom of the Yome tribe and rarely photographed. Masiakai, known in the Yaqui language, is reported to have been held before a deer hunt to honor the deer for his sacrifice so that the people could survive. Deer dancers, known as Pakolam or Old Men of the Fiesta, wear rattles made of moth or butterfly cocoons around their ankles filled with seeds to celebrate the insect world, and rattles made of deer hooves around their waist to honor the countless deer who have perished. Instruments include a water drum, the deer's heartbeat, an animal hide frame drum, a rasp representing the deer's breathing, gourd rattles held by the dancers honoring the plant world, a flute, fiddle, and a framed harp derived from Spanish influences. In Yaqui mythology, the deer signifies good, and the dancers narrate the story of the deer, their younger brother, and the flower world. In the flower world, all animals are our friends. It is thought that during a fiesta, the deer visits the Yaqui people and is sacrificed to the gods. In exchange, they perform a dance and ceremony in his honor, thanking him for contributing to their well-being. Every jump, move, and gesture in the deer dance contains important symbolism. The agility and freedom of the deer, the struggle of the hunters, the environment, all telling a story of life and death, predator and prey. The dance culminates with the symbolic death of the deer, which serves as a solemn reminder of the circle of life and our place in it. The deer dance is a song of appreciation and reverence for nature's bounty, confirming the tribe's commitment to coexisting with it. This principle is strongly rooted in their culture and way of life. For the Yaqui of Mexico and Arizona, these images represent a history of cultural continuity, tribal sovereignty, and ritual sacrifice. The deer dance, a tribute to the Yoeme's strong appreciation for nature, acts as a reminder of our connection to this earth. The Yaqui perceived the world as a dimensional structure made up of realms that overlap called Anium. Composed of nine layers, this cosmological model represents their universe each reflecting different facets of Yaqui life beliefs. The world's span from the sea Anya, representing the tribe's life-sustaining link with water, to the sky Anya, reflecting their knowledge of the cosmos. The Yaqui people's relationship with nature is evident in the wilderness and flower Huya Anya. The Nao Anya, a corncob world where heaven and hell collide. The Tuka Anya highlights the night, while the Tenku Anya signifies the tribe's belief in the power of dreams. The journey through the Anium culminates in the Death Anya, not seen as a realm of fear, but a sphere of continuity, reflecting the Yaqui's belief in life after death. The Anium is a rich tapestry of the Yaqui tribe's intricate worldview, representing their connection with nature, belief in the subconscious, and acceptance of death as an integral part of the life cycle. Once upon a time, a towering tree that stretched from the earth to the heavens continuously hummed sounding like a swarm of bees. This tree was a prophet, known as Napoisain Jisakame, who predicted the arrival of a terrifying beast from the north to the Yaqui people. In preparation, the Yaqui appointed permanent warriors to various locations. Not long after, a gigantic serpent emerged. After two fruitless battles with the serpent, the talking tree prophet dispatched a swallow to seek help from the sorcerer cricket on behalf of the eight tribes. The swallow soared swiftly like a streak of lightning until it located the cricket. When it located the cricket, cricket shouted, chick, 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 his distinctive melody. After hearing the swallow's call for aid, 
Cricket strengthened his spindly legs after considering the situation. As he climbed a steep hill, he shouted cryptic incantations, and with a strong thrust from his spurs, he leaped an incredible distance that would normally take eleven and a half days to cover. Cricket appeared in the center of the Yaki town, seemingly out of nowhere. The Yaki washed him in an infusion of twigs and green leaves before placing him on a tree, as Cricket had directed. I am prepared, Cricket replied. Chick, 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 chick. When the monster arrived, Cricket pounced off the tree from above, delivering two powerful slices that severed the beast's head. As a result, the monster was defeated and the tree's prophecy came true. However, at the same time, another prophecy was made. With the serpent's dying breath, it warned them that a new enemy that would soon emerge, one that they would have to face with even more courage, pale warriors equipped with powerful weapons that spit fire. No one could know what that would really mean for their people. The Yaqui tribe, known for their fierce warrior spirit, had numerous encounters with the Spanish invaders. The serpent's warning of pale men armed with powerful weapons that spew fire had indeed held true. Yet the Yaqui's resistance against the Spanish is a testament to their courage and resilience. Despite being outnumbered and outgunned, the Yaqui fought bravely, defending their land and culture. The Spanish, eager to claim the Yaqui's rich lands for their own, were relentless in their pursuits. However, they underestimated the Yaqui's determination and their deep connection to their land. The Yaqui, driven by the prophecy and their warrior spirit, resisted the Spanish invasions, engaging in numerous battles that lasted for centuries, yet never surrendering to Spain. Despite the daunting odds, the Yaqui warriors exhibited remarkable bravery and strategic genius, often outmaneuvering the Spanish forces. They utilized their deep knowledge of the land to their advantage, launching surprise attacks and retreating into the dense forests and mountains when necessary. Their resistance was so fierce that it came to define their identity and history. Unfortunately, in the early 1900s, many Yaqui families were either forced to move or relocated to Arizona to escape the violence of the 1910 to 1920 Mexican Revolution. Thousands of Yaqui people still do live in Mexico in the states of Chihuahua, Sonora, and Durango. The Yaqui spirit and their refusal to surrender became a symbol of resistance against colonialism. These battles, while tragic, are a poignant reminder of their indomitable spirit and their determination to protect their way of life. Thank you for watching another episode of Universe Unraveled. If you liked the video, hit the like and subscribe button and become a part of this upcoming channel and community. I appreciate every subscriber and encourage you to leave a comment or thought about the videos you've seen. New videos to come out every Friday. Raffle for free merch once I reach 100 subscribers. Have a great week.